Would you believe me if I told you there's a province here in China that doesn't actually eat rice? Well, I found myself in such a place. This rice seems like no meat, right? Okay, no meat. We in this province mainly eat rice. Yep, here in Shanxi province, it's all about the wheat products and noodles. And it's here I actually discover a noodle the likes of which I have never seen before. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. Hello, hello, and welcome to another Chinese food adventure. I have just gotten off my sleeper train here, and I am officially in Taiyuan. It's the capital city of Shanxi province, which is for your information the province that sits right next to Shanxi province, where I was in the previous videos. But seriously, whose idea was it to put Shanxi next to Shanxi? So I got on this morning at Heyang, that's where I ate my ancient instant noodles yesterday. If you haven't already, go check out that video now. It's taken me a roughly eight hour journey to get here. Uh, and I've been very, very comfortable. This time I actually booked a soft sleeper. Uh, so the main differences between a hard sleeper and a soft sleeper here on the sleeper trains is the soft sleepers have four beds in a cabin and the hard sleepers have six. Also, it seems that the soft sleepers have a door, so there's a little bit more privacy. Uh, but let me tell you, eight hour train, it hits completely different when you can lie down. I mean, it was bliss. I didn't even want the trip to end. So what does one do and of course eat here in Taiyuan? Well, that was exactly the question I was asking myself this morning because this trip is working out a little bit differently from my usual trips. So usually uh, when I leave home, I know what kind of videos I want to make, where I want to go, what I want to eat, and in many cases, exactly what restaurants I want to go to. But the decision to go to Heyang at very last minute has turned my direction from the western route I was originally planning to the east. Uh, and also the only train with availability all of today from Heyang was that train. And uh, the destination was Taiyuan. So I am rolling with it. I actually sent out a message while I was on the train to my Chinese social media followers asking what should I eat here in Taiyuan and you guys came through with the recommendations. I read every single comment. The biggest problem is with so many options what to choose. So the first thing that's come to my attention reading these comments is that Taiyuan is a city that loves eating noodles with some people going as far to say that people do not eat rice in this city only noodles. There's Qijian, Minjian, just to name a few. So with so many noodle options, how am I going to decide? Well, how I always decide when there's an impossible food decision in front of me. I'm going to write down some options on a piece of paper, put it in a hat and draw it out. Okay, let's see what we'll be eating for dinner tonight. What kind of noodle we are having. Oh, the one I was most intrigued by. Youmian kao lao lao. What kind of noodle did I pick? I've just gone online to see like where I can get these noodles and I've just seen a picture of what they look like. I've never seen a noodle like this before. What is this? I guess we put, it came out of the hat. We're going. Let's get to this place. I have arrived. The name of the restaurant is literally Youmian Guan. So I feel like I'll be able to find it here. Here are our noodles, our Youmian kao lao lao. But also look at this. There's a different variety of those noodles called Yomia Yu Yu. They really just only eat noodles here. There is no rice on the menu. So it seems what people are saying is actually true. Anyway, for whatever shape noodle you choose, you need to order a dipping sauce to give it some flavor. Here you can choose between mutton, pork, and tomato dipping sauce. I went for the mutton and tomato one. And here it is. I have my noodles. Noodles. Guys, what is happening here? These are the craziest noodles I have ever seen. And I'm sure I'm not the only one curious about how they're made, so I actually went back the next day to see the whole process for myself. So first let's talk about this batter. It's made with oat flour, which you may have already guessed by the name of the noodle, you mian, which literally means oat flour or oat noodle. So I'm just seeing the dough being made here and it smells like oats. It smells like my porridge that I make in the morning. So once the dough has been kneaded into a smooth ball, now comes the interesting part, making it into the shape of this noodle. So bit by bit, she takes small pieces of this oat flour dough, flattens it with her palm on the bench, then flicks it around her finger to make a noodle cylinder, which she then adds one by one to the steamer basket. I've never seen a noodle being made like this before. It is a lot of hard work. It's not like your typical bowl of noodles where you can do a lot in one go, boil it, and then your bowl of noodles is done. This takes quite a lot of time. She can make about eight of these in an hour. 
I mean, eight portions in one hour. That's just next level. And it's so beautiful. It looks like honeycomb there. It's then steamed and this is the final product that reaches your table. But as I mentioned, you don't just eat it plain. Here is my mutton sauce, my tomato sauce, and they also provide a bowl of vinegar too. You take a little bit of your dipping sauce, whichever one you want to use. You put it in your bowl and then separate some of those noodle cylinders and dip it in the sauce so it's covered in juice. Going in with what is without a doubt the most unique shaped noodle I've ever had in my life. Mm. The noodle has a nice springy, bouncy texture, which I really like. And that dipping sauce is nice and rich with the lamb. That dipping sauce really packs a meaty punch, so don't worry. Even though at first glance it may look a bit plain, this is definitely not lacking in the flavor department. So I'm very glad I also got this, um, this tomato one as well, because I feel like it might add a little bit of freshness to the palate, because I can already tell that after a few bites of that lamb one, I'm gonna start getting a little bit weighed down. Kind of tastes like a really salty tomato soup. I thought that tomato one would be more refreshing, but it is very salty. What I'm liking is between every few bites of the lamb and the tomato one, um, is dipping it in this vinegar to like refresh my palate. Another tip, as much as possible, eat them while hot. The noodles really start to stick together when they cool down. And it just reminds me, sometimes you just gotta let fate take the wheel and just go where it leads you. I had my doubts, but this is so cool. But this is not the end of this food adventure. Catch you guys in the morning for breakfast. Hello, good morning. It is time for breakfast. And apparently when it comes to breakfast here in Taiwan, there's really only one option, at least according to that comment section. And that is something called tonal, literal translation, head brains. I'm a little bit perplexed by it. A lot of people are saying that it's something I probably am not gonna love. Some people are putting it on par with Beijing's dolce. And apparently the place to get it is this behind me here. It is a chain. There are many of them throughout the city. This was the one closest to my hotel. So let's go in and see what this uh, head brains is all about. So this is it here. I mean, it looks pretty nice. First step is you come here to order. So I've ordered my, <laughs> my head brains. I have also ordered a portion of shawmai, uh, lamb shawmai. Oh, here they spell it funny, shawmai. Interesting. Basically, just hand your receipt to the kitchen and they'll prepare your order. Oh my gosh, this is a big breakfast, guys. So I've just sat down at my table and there has been at least three or four people come up to my table. Give me some tips on how to eat this. You can eat it? No, no, no. This is our Shanxi, this is our Chinese best. Really? Really? You try it, you try it. It's not a different taste. Really? Really? It's so good. Use this on this one. Ah, explain to me the history. Apparently there's 400 years behind this dish. This is our Fu San Xian Shen. It's for his mother's disease and disease. It's for his mother's disease and disease. And this is like some kind of medicine, actually. Um, the waitress was telling me that it has no flavor. So you need to pair it with some of this uh, chives. And a man actually came up and said that what I can do is actually add some vinegar to my chives here. But first I'm keen to go in and just try the original flavor. There's uh, some lamb inside. I've learned this is a halal restaurant. Everything is halal, including the shaomai doesn't really smell like much. Yum. I mean, it's not like a, a huge bang of flavor in my face, but it's subtle. It actually has a sweetness to it. It's very warming. All I have to say is the people that were equating this with Dolce in Beijing, I don't know what planet you're living on. This is nothing like Dolce. Firstly, it doesn't have a smell, just like a, a slight, Lamby smell, it smells a little bit like lamb. Um, and the taste, it's just, tastes like, it's a little bit sweet. It's got a little bit of a taste from the lamb that's inside there. It's nice, I like it. It's, I guess, warming. Good to have in winter, I suppose. And I've heard from the chef that this is very good for you. It's got like medicine inside, all these things that are very good for the body. So 
Yeah, okay, I'll eat up. And I have to say, as I went for spoonful after spoonful, I could really feel this working its magic in my body. It was super warm in my stomach. But now it's time to eat it like the locals eat it, with vinegar and chives added. They have instructions on how to eat this on all the walls here. It seems the first step is you get your chives, you add in vinegar to the chives, and then you pour that into the bowl and then you mix it up and you eat it. So after letting it soak for a few minutes, I then added it to my bowl and used my chopsticks to stir it together. I do have to say I was quite a fan of it, even just plain, but let's see how it tastes with those chives and that uh, vinegar inside. It definitely completely changes the flavor. I no longer can taste the sweetness in it. And now it adds like the saltiness from the chives and a sourness from the, um, from the vinegar. It's a more exciting flavor, but I do have to admit I preferred it plain. Anyway, still nice. Now let's go in for one of the biggest shawmai I think I've ever seen in my life. I previously thought that title belonged to Beijing. They have like this shawmai that's really big, really beautiful, but I think this might be actually even a little bit bigger. Um, I've been told I can pair it with some, um, some vinegar. China's best vinegar apparently, according to the waitress. Let's see how it tastes with this shawmai. Oh wow. Mm, yum. It's so moist inside. Check that out. It's filled with lamb and there's also a little bit of onion inside too, so it has an onioniness. It's very rich. It's very big. I mean, that's a, that's a big two, three, four, five mouthfuls. Let's see. Well, I have a pretty big mouth. Fit a lot of food in there. And that took me four big mouthfuls to finish one shawmai. This is a breakfast I would definitely have again. I have taken away the last three shawmai. I did my best to finish my bowl of that uh, tonal. I got about halfway through. My advice is to come with a friend because they are big bowls and they only offer the big bowls I've learned. Um, but something I have to say is I feel so good right now and I'm not just saying that. My stomach feels happy, like really happy. I've been eating a lot the last few days, a lot of spicy things, a lot of carbs. But after that meal, I feel like my body has been reset. I'm still really full though. So we're gonna have a little walk around. <laughs> One thing I wasn't expecting from Taiyuan is just how beautiful it is. There's all these beautiful buildings, like ancient architecture everywhere. I've since learned Taiyuan is an ancient city. It has over 2,500 years of history, and some even call it the Dragon City because it was the birthplace of so many emperors. So for our last food adventure of the day, I'm keen to check out the more traditional side of Shanxi cuisine. For my last meal on today's food adventure, I brought myself to this restaurant here, which is serving up authentic Shanxi cuisine, also known as Jin Cai. And the dish I am coming here to try, people in the comments have been raving about, and it also happens to be one of the most representative dishes of Shanxi cuisine. It's of course this dish here, Guo Yo Rou. So here's the menu, and this is the dish I'm here to try, the Guo Yo Rou. When it arrived on my table, oh my gosh, it smelled so good. Uh, so it may look like my table is very low, and that's because it is. Um, this restaurant is very famous and very, very busy. It's a massive line of people waiting to eat here. But if people were willing to sit on like a shared table, um, you can skip the line. So I decided to do that. And there was this little like kind of alcove here and everyone is sitting around the corner there. So I'm just gonna <laughs> eat my goyo roll here. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in this, not just the meat. You've also got woody mushrooms, bits of um, bamboo here, got some onion as well. I'm just gonna go in for a piece of that meat. Oh my God. It's really, really good. First thing is it's um, the meat is so tender. It almost melts in my mouth. It's a combination of salty, and sour actually. There's a bit of sourness at the end as well. And I mean, when ordering a plate of meat and veggies, it's already built in me to order it with a side of some kind of carb. And I asked the waiter, like, what do people usually eat this with? And he actually said rice, but out of principle, <laughs> I didn't want to eat rice in the city. So I've actually got it with a, a serving of noodles um, on the side. Even though the waiter did end up bringing me a bowl of rice anyway, I'm sticking strong to my plan. I'm going to add some of those straight to the bowl so I can soak up the juices. And I think this is going to taste really, really good. Sorry, rice. Today's just not about you. Don't worry. I'll make it up to you later in another province. That's good. I like that a lot. It really soaks up the juices. The noodle itself is delicious, super, super juicy. Wouldn't expect anything else from the noodle capital of China. And even though a bowl of plain noodles isn't necessarily on the menu as an option, I'd recommend you ask for it like I did because, you know, when in Rome. 
Well, that brings us to the end of today's Taiyuan food adventure. I am so glad I came to Taiyuan. I've had the best time. And I'm gonna spend the rest of the afternoon here at the Yomiya noodle place. I'm gonna learn how it's made, the process behind it, so I can put that footage back at the beginning of this video. But thank you guys so much for watching. I cannot wait to share next week's video with you. I am going somewhere. I have wanted to go for years filming a video. I have wanted to film for years. I am going to the Donkey Burger capital of China, and I'm gonna eat all the Donkey Burger. So don't miss out on that. I'll catch you guys next week. Bye! <laughs>